Welcome to online worship uh, for Decorah Lutheran Church for the first Sunday of Christmas, which is December 27th, 2020. I am Pastor Sterling. Of course, you can watch this at any time. Thank you. Thanks to the magic of the internet and, and technology. Also, thanks to the magic of technology and the internet, I uh, chose to, to record this from home this Christmas season and share some of what we've attempted to do at my home for some Christmas coziness this year instead of uh, heading in and putting in all the, all, all the magic robes. I do have a couple announcements. Uh, first, I need to announce this on January 24th, we will be having our annual meeting. Uh, we are still looking to recruit a president for our council. This is important. Um, Bill Schleckert isn't going, we're not going to, as you probably saw in Bill Schleckert's uh, email, we had considered as a council whether or not to ask to amend our bylaws and the like to allow Bill to serve for an extra year because we had not recruited a candidate yet. Um, this is not, uh, we are not going to do that. So if we don't manage to recruit a president, then we don't manage to recruit a president and we will um, uh, assume that's what the Holy Spirit wishes for us and, and move forward the best we can. Uh, but we are still recruiting a president. If you are interested in leadership in this, in, in this community at Decora, uh, and you think you have, maybe have some gifts and skills around the administrative leadership side of things, uh, I encourage you to pray, think about whatever questions you may have, and if you want to ask those questions or you want to be get on the ballot, please connect with a member of the council or myself. Um, to, we need to vote, do two particular things, but we'll look at the annual report, but uh, the big things is that we vote on a, a plan for ministry, which is also known as a budget, and uh, of course we need to vote for, for our folks for council. To be able to vote, uh, you need to be a voting member of our, of our congregation. What does it mean to be a voting member? Well, first, uh, one of, first you need to uh, either be confirmed here and still a member here, be a member here and received by adult baptism, or you will have transferred from another congregation your membership here. That's first. And second, uh, you will need to have give, uh, participated in communion and given a gift of record, so a, a, a tithe or a donation of record that we know that you gave it um, at some point in the calendar year of 2020. So you still, if you haven't done those things, you still have, uh, well, a few days to do that. In fact, we are doing communion on December 27th, so uh, you get the worship at the same time, but it won't, that won't hurt you. Um, so if you're interested in voting, that is what you need to do. Um, again, I remind you that we are going to, after the first of the year, uh, I'm going to work with the hospitality committee and any volunteers, including you, to reach out to folks in our congregation to do sort of wellness, both spiritual and physical wellness checkups on folks. We are usually such a close community. We usually see each other so often, and obviously we, we haven't been able to do that as well, even with our drive-in services. So um, if you're interested in being involved in that, uh, I'm gonna put my email down right here in the, in, I'm gonna put it right there in, on the screen, and you can email me and we'll put you on the list and we will, uh, when we're ready to get started, we'll, we'll, we will uh, sort of give you instructions and a list of folks to reach out to. It should be a lot of fun. Um, last but not least, the order of worship will be, at the very least, on, linked on the YouTube page, if not also on the Facebook page under, underneath the thing last for Christmas. I wasn't able to link, for whatever reason, link uh, to the Google Doc that contained the online worship, uh, order of worship, and, but it will still always be on, at least for now, at least be on the YouTube page unless, I don't know, since Google owns YouTube, I figure that shouldn't be problematic. So, folks, that's uh, what I know. So let's take a moment to prepare for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins now in the presence of God and one another, um, especially if you're worshiping with anybody uh, online, as we take a moment for silent uh, confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Now in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. And I do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Now let's pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature, and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Isaiah in the, both the 61st and the 62nd chapter. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause the righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like the burning torch. The nation shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name in the mouth of the Lord that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be, crown, be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Here ends the first reading. Our second reading comes from Galatians in the fourth chapter. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir. Through God. So we have a little special treat today. Uh, Bishop, our bishop for our Senate at South Central Wisconsin has 
I prepared a message, a video message for everyone. Uh, and so uh, Bishop Joy Mortensen Weeby uh, has this message for you. Enjoy. Good morning. The gospel for this day is found in the gospel of Luke, the second chapter. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see, be see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for gathering us together this day. We ask that your word would do what it says. We ask that your spirit would be in our midst and that we would be sent out with your word to be peace in our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here we are just a few days removed from the celebration of Christmas, the birth of Christ, and already the sweetness and innocence of that night are gone. After all the weeks of anticipation and the sweetness of the babe lying in the manger, it all seems to be gone in a flash. After the weeks and weeks of anticipation, now the tinsel and the trees are coming down all around us. Even though we know there are 12 days of Christmas, the world acts as if Christmas is long gone and the baby Jesus along with it. But we know this is not the case. Jesus was after all still in his diapers when his parents brought him to the temple to do what was required. They were required to present him to the Lord. And this is when old Simeon spots him. Years before, Simeon had been told that he would not die until he had laid eyes upon the Messiah. And now time was running out for dear old Simeon. He'd been getting out of bed day after day after day, walking hopefully to the temple each and every morning. And now those morning walks were getting harder and harder. But this day, he sat down in the temple, perhaps close to his friend Anna, who he saw each and every morning as well. And he sat down, and these young parents walked in, and it only took a glance. And through those old lenses of his eyes, he saw Jesus, and instantly he knew. He looked at those parents and he said, can I hold that baby? And these new young parents do what every young set of new parents do. They looked at each other and a silent, 
glance of horror passes between them. Can we give our baby to a stranger? An old stranger? But they do. And inside their brains are screaming, please don't drop him. Simeon takes the baby and he whispers, and in my mind, it's a whisper that only the parents and baby Jesus playing with the fringe of Simeon's beard and perhaps Anna can hear. He whispers, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation. The parents were pleased as punch as any new parents would be. Someone not only noticed their beautiful new baby, but blessed him and threw in a blessing for the parents as well. But then something about that mother stopped dear old Simeon. It might have been a look in her eye. It might have been a passing glance that she gave that looked over everyone else's head. Whatever it was, Simeon's expression changed. And before he could even get the words out of his mouth, before he could stop them, they tumbled out. A sword will pierce through your soul. Why? Why had this perfect day for Simeon, the one he'd waited so, for so long, been now marred in this way? What would this mother face? Simeon hands back that dear baby. He hands back this child and he departs in the less than perfect peace he'd imagined all those many days of walking to the temple. Peace, my friends, is a hard concept. We pray for it. We wait for it. We are told to work for it. But peace is often elusive. Peace has been front and center in so many ways in 2020. We've called for it amid marches that have turned violent. We have prayed for it before and around and since the election. We've sought it during quarantine domestic upheavals, school interruptions, sickness, death, and countless other challenges that this pandemic that we are in have caused our daily lives to be interrupted. Yet, God's peace is an issue of the heart. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your hearts be afraid. Believe in God. Believe in God, we are told. How many times in the scriptures are we told to trust and to believe? God's peace is a gift that we can feel. It's an issue of the heart. Simeon departs in peace after he meets the Messiah. He doesn't leave with all his questions answered. He doesn't leave knowing what the 33 years of Jesus's life on earth are gonna be like. He doesn't know how things are gonna end. But Simeon departs in peace. It may not be the peace of his early morning walks. It's not the peace born of our imagination. Instead, he leaves with the peace of Christ the peace of Christ who lives and reigns, who lives and reigns for us. Jesus, you know, had the same conversation with his disciples. In John 16, he says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In this Christmas season, we celebrate that the peace of God is in the world. We have many struggles and challenges in this world, but we can be of good cheer. We need not be afraid. We can walk our daily walk, knowing that we walk with the Prince of Peace, knowing that we have 
the peace of God. So Merry Christmas, dear ones. Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. May you know that the Prince of Peace is here. The Prince of Peace is yours. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Night and day, all creation praises you, O God. Strengthen your church across nations, denominations, and traditions. Fill us with the wisdom and with your wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All creation is holy to you, O God. You cause the earth to bring forth its shoots and gardens to spring up. Protect hibernating animals and frozen lands that wait earnestly for longer days of awakening and growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The nations are upheld by your hand, O God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth, inspiring leaders to serve with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of discernment upon legislators grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, O God. Come quickly to the hearts that, that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, hearts that long for wholeness, hearts with blessing to celebrate, and even hearts of those who have hurt us in the past. Today we especially pray for the family and friends of Tammy. Tammy has died of COVID. Uh, she is Cheryl Pendleton's nephew, Jeff's wife, as well as anyone that we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Reveal your power to heal and to save. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Adopt us into your family, O God. Bless our elders with the peace and joy of Simeon and Anna. Strengthen those who have retired those who work in older age, and those in need of income, food, company, or health care. Connect young and old across generations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Let us depart in peace, O God, according to your word. For all your saints, we give you thanks. Prepare our salvation in the sight of all your witnesses of every time and place. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace, as we lift these and all of our prayers to you, known and unknown, spoken and unspoken, anything in, that is to your will. And we do so in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for worshiping with us today. Now the Lord, and now the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So please, go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.